Hello fellow cinephiles, Film Guru here. For those new to the channel, my name's Sean, also known as Film Guru, and I started this channel having my same particular movies in a variety of film content, so thanks for joining me today. Today I'm reviewing a film that came out a while ago, Halloween Ends. This is my second viewing of the film. The first viewing, I didn't overly like the movie. I felt it was, I felt it was kind of a terrible conclusion to a trilogy. It just felt out of place and wrong. So this time around, I decided to go into it looking at it in a different way. So I went in just looking at it as a standalone Halloween film. And I must admit, I enjoyed it a lot more doing it that way. I, I still didn't overly love the Corey character. I could see what they were going for. And I liked the idea this film takes place after the events of Halloween Kills, looks at how people are trying to move on from, from the evil that Michael Myers was and how he infected the town in that way. So it became violent and, and aggressive. And with him not being around for a period of time, it feels like the town's trying to get back on track. Laurie Strode's trying to move forward, which I thought was interesting. I don't know if I love the idea of her kind of resorting back to when she was 16 or 17 in the original Halloween film with a similar dress and stuff. She just felt odd and out of place to be doing that. I can understand that she wants to move forward and is trying to forget her past, but I just felt that was nostalgic, but it was going back too far rather than forward. I thought the Allison character was interesting. I, I liked the idea that she, you know, her parents are dead, she's living with her grandmother, but she wants, she's trying to decide what to do with her life and she's trying to make sense of things now. And then because of that conflict in her, she meets Corey, who has in his own conflict due to what happened to him at the start of the film, being blamed for the death of a young kid, has had an impact in, on him as well. And it feels like that's the reason these two come together. I don't know if I overly buy the rushed relationship that the, the filmmakers are going for, but I can accept it. I, I can see what he was trying to do. And I could see that is this idea when, when Corey comes face to face with Michael Myers in the sewer, it, it's like when Myers touches him, it's like he sees all of this pain and anguish, but it, you can look at it two ways. It feels like two things. Michael Myers infects Corey, and that's kind of maybe what David Gordon Green was going for, the idea that Michael Myers can still infect things, infect fear and darkness and violence in people. But to me, my perception of it is it's like Myers transferred part of him into Corey. And every time Corey kills, it's like Michael gets stronger. There is a moment where Corey helps Michael and he stabs someone and it's like the life force energy is brought back into him. But I just feel like throughout the film, it's Corey killing people. And each time he kills someone, Michael seems to get stronger and then keeps appearing and, and is only brought back to life. And that's my interpretation of what I think the film was going for, which made me enjoy it a lot more. Some of the kills are good that Corey does. Like he puts on the mask and the, the DJ he kills, the kids he kills at the junkyard is really well done. The ending's really good of this film. I always liked the ending. Even in my first viewing, I liked the ending. I felt that was the ending that the whole film should have been as a conclusion to the trilogy. But as a standalone, I think there's some solid elements to it. And it, it really looks at how Sometimes events can cause people to become dark and, and affected by them and, and can start to alter who they are deep inside. I like that Laurie's writing this book and she's, she's, she's trying to move on. But like there's a line that Corey says later in the film, it's like she's trying to move forward, but deep down she hopes Michael comes back so she can finish what she started. And that sort of lingers in her and that feels like maybe that's the case. She's putting on a facade, this is happy facade, and oh look at me, I'm setting down roots and you know I'm dressing how appropriately and I'm feeling like I used to. But there's moments throughout where you start to see that facade slip away. Especially when she interacts or comes in contact with someone who survived the, the events of the the Halloween kills. And the and she starts to see the impact and, and this person's blaming her for bringing back Michael and doing those things. And then when she sees Corey has changed, she sort of, the facade drops more, and then she fully becomes the Laurie Strode that we saw in David Gordon Green's first Halloween film. And I, 
I think that's kind of interesting and great and is a real character piece. And of course she becomes the big hero in the end where she takes on Michael once and for all. And I love this fight sequence. It felt intimate, it felt um, intense and, and it felt like a really good conclusion to, to this journey of Laurie Strode from the original film to its sequels to these movies. It just felt a real touching and beautiful way to end the Halloween concept, for, for now anyway. And I like right at the end where it's like this relief. Michael's gone now. Laurie doesn't have to put on this facade anymore. She can, she can actually let go and move forward. And Alison can break free of the constraints of the town. Haddonfield and move on and go out and s find herself in the world. I think that's really great. And it's sort of sort of rids the town of this evil that's been hovering over it or part of it for so long. One little thing that's bugged me throughout all the films that David Gordon Green has done in the Halloween in the Hall in the Halloween franchise is all the side characters are so nasty, especially the kids. Like in Halloween Kills, the Lonnie character, these kids are so mean and nasty to him, like so aggressively nasty. And it just felt like, I know throughout the Halloween film, especially the original film and the sequels that came from that, two and four, they have those nasty kids, but this just felt extreme versions of them, just little shits. And this one has that as well. There's these high school students who give Corey a, like a hard time, but they're so aggressive and violent and angry. And I just like, it felt unrealistic. And that was always something I didn't like about it. Why do they have to be so angry? And like I said, there are still issues I have with it. The Corey character isn't my favorite, but I kind of see what they were trying to go with and what they were trying to do with the film in a way. But like I said, I enjoyed this viewing of the film much more than the first. Final thoughts. As a standalone Halloween film, it's fine. It, it, it fits within the world. As a concluding chapter to a trilogy, doesn't work for me. I would think they went too far and different direction than they should have. Upon this viewing, I'm gonna give Halloween Ends three and a half out of five, which is much better than half a star I gave on Letterboxd. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit subscribe down the bottom, follow me on Letterboxd and Facebook. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.